Good, good evening, members of the Business Roundtable. It is my privilege tonight to introduce President Barack Obama, the 44th President of the United States, and it's great to have him with us. Many of us at the Business Roundtable have had the privilege to work with the President and members of his administration here at home and all around the world. The all around the world part I can vouch for on a wide range of issues where the interests of American business and government intersect from trade and export promotion to investment and tax policy to education and regulatory reform and more. I know that all of us, whether in business or government, share the goal of strengthening our economy and creating more jobs more quickly for American workers. And Mr. President, we are eager to hear from you on those topics and others tonight. In the audience, we have more than 90, I think the count is closer to 100, CEOs representing American businesses from across the country. A great turnout, I would say a record turnout, uh, of our business roundtable membership, particularly on short notice. Mr. President, we are honored that you've chosen to spend your evening with us, and we look forward to a candid, productive, private discussion following your remarks. With that, ladies and gentlemen, President Barack Obama. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much, everybody. Uh, it is good to see all of you. Jim, uh, thank you for the introduction. Uh, it is a privilege to be with the men and women of the Business Roundtable. Uh, over the past three years, uh, we've worked together on a number of issues, and uh, we've found common ground on an awful lot of them. Uh, some of you have dedicated your time and energy and expertise to serving on my Jobs Council uh, or my Export Council. Uh, others have hosted me or cabinet members at your companies, uh, at your plants, at your distribution centers. Uh, and this engagement has been incredibly productive for us. Uh, it's helped to shape our collective work uh, to get this economy growing again. Uh, so I just wanted to say thank you uh, for that. Uh, tonight, uh, I want to keep that engagement going, so I'm going to keep my remarks at the top relatively brief. Uh, I'm looking forward to hearing about your new uh, Taking Action for America report, and I'm going to hopefully spend as much time listening uh, as I do talking. Uh, but the last time I addressed this group was just over two years ago, when we were still working to clear away the wreckage from what turned out to be the worst economic crisis that we've seen since the Great Depression. Uh, and obviously, we've got a long way to go. Uh, we've still got millions of people who are out of work. We still have a lot of folks whose homes are underwater. Uh, there are enormous economic challenges that lie ahead, and we're going to have to think strategically and systematically about how we restore a sense of middle-class security uh, for Americans who are doing the right thing, working hard, uh, looking to support their families. The good news is, over the last two years, uh, businesses like yours have created over 3.7 million new jobs. Uh, the American auto industry uh, has come back. Companies are bringing jobs back to America. Manufacturers are adding new jobs for the first time since the 1990s. Uh, and I've seen it firsthand in many of your companies. Most recently, I went to uh, the Boeing plant uh, uh, out in Washington State, uh, and Jim informed me that last year orders for commercial aircraft rose by more than 50 percent, and they had to hire 13,000 workers all across America just to keep up. Uh, and I have to say that uh, given the number of uh, planes that I've been selling around the, uh, around the world, uh, I expect a gold watch uh, upon my <laughs> retirement. Uh, so, so the economy is getting stronger, uh, and the recovery is speeding up. And the question now is, how do we make sure that it keeps going? Uh, I've been talking a lot uh, recently about how we can do that, how we can help companies like yours hire more workers, bring more jobs back to America, uh, how we can leave an econo uh, economy that's not just restored to pre-crisis levels, but positions ourselves to be competitive uh, in this 21st century economy over the long term, uh, an economy built to last. Uh, I think we have to focus on our core strengths. Uh, American manufacturing, American energy, uh, American innovation, uh, the best skills and education for American workers. Uh, right now, on the manufacturing front, uh, I think we've got a huge opportunity. What's happened in the auto industry can happen in other areas. Uh, and we've got to make sure that uh, we understand, even though manufacturing uh, will not be the same percentage of our economy as it once was, it still uh, remains this incredible multiplier for services and consumers and prosperity all across America. Uh, that's why I want to thank uh, Andrew Liveris. Uh, where, where's Andrew? Right 
there is, uh, Andrew is helping us do some terrific work uh, as part of our advanced manufacturing partnership. Uh, and obviously part of our job as the federal government is to make sure that the R&D, the basic research is continuing to be done and uh, figuring out how we commercialize that, create products here in America and sell them all around the world is going to be uh, absolutely critical. Uh, thanks to new bipartisan trade agreements uh, that I've signed with Panama, Colombia, and most significantly South Korea. Uh, we're on track to meet our goal of doubling American exports over the next five years. And I know the BRT was very helpful uh, in making sure that that happened. Uh, I think I've shown that I will go anywhere in the world to open new markets for American goods. Uh, that's why we worked so hard to secure Russia's uh, invitation into the WTO. Uh, that's why I have asked Congress to repeal Jackson Vanek to make sure that all your companies uh, and, and American companies all across uh, the country can take advantage of it. And that's something that uh, we're going to need some help on. Uh, this is about uh, creating a level rules-based playing field uh, in the growing Russian market. Uh, because when it comes to competing for the jobs in the industries of tomorrow, no foreign company uh, should have an advantage over American companies. Uh, when the playing field is level, American companies will win. American workers will win, and this country will win. And one of the most important things Congress can do right now uh, for companies like yours uh, to sell your ideas and your products and your services around the world is to reauthorize the Export-Import Bank at the appropriate funding level. Uh, this is something that we're going to be focused on in the coming weeks and months. You know, during the financial crisis, trade finance dried up uh, all around the world. And the Exim Bank lived up to its mission. It stepped up uh, to fill the void at record levels and at no cost to taxpayers. In fact, since 2005, Exim has returned billions back to the U.S. Treasury. So this is a smart thing to do uh, for American businesses uh, and American jobs. It is an indispensable resource for our exporters, uh, especially since many of your competitors are getting aggressive financing from their governments. Uh, so I'm asking your help in making sure Congress does the right thing on this front. Uh, I've also shown that I won't stand by when our competitors don't play by the rules. Uh, a lot of you are expanding into growth markets, in emerging markets, in uh, Asia, Pacific region. Uh, but many of you, at least privately, have indicated to me that it gets harder and harder to do business there in terms of protecting your intellectual property, competing uh, <laughs> against uh, indigenous uh, innovation laws. And so what we are doing is setting up a trade enforcement unit uh, to aggressively investigate and counter unfair uh, trade practices uh, all around the world, including countries like China. Uh, and if you're a CEO that's willing to bring jobs back to America, uh, we want to do everything we can to help you succeed. Uh, that means uh, working together to reform our tax system so that we are rewarding companies uh, that are investing here in the United States, uh, making sure that we are able to cut our tax rate here but also broaden the base. Uh, that is going to be a difficult task. Uh, anybody who's been involved dis uh, in tax discussions uh, in any legislature, uh, but especially Congress, uh, knows that uh, it's like pulling teeth. But it is the right thing to do for us to become more competitive. We're also going to have to make uh, significant investments in American energy. Uh, I am very proud of the fact that uh, American energy output uh, is reaching record levels. Uh, we are seeing the highest oil production. Uh, in the last eight years. At the same time, because so many of your companies have become more efficient, we're actually seeing a reduction in uh, imports. In fact, below 50 percent for the first time uh, back in 2010, uh, first time in a decade. Uh, but we've got more work to do, and it's going to require an all of the above strategy. Obviously, folks are getting killed right now with gas prices. And that has an impact on all your companies, because consumers are more price sensitive uh, when it comes to uh, filling up their gas tank than just about anything else. Uh, that means, yes, we've got to produce more oil and na more natural gas, and, and we are game for that. It also means, though, we've got to invest in the energy sources of the future. We've got to invest in clean energy. We've got to invest in efficiency. We've got to make sure that the advanced batteries uh, for electric cars, for example, are manufactured here in the United States. And then the final thing we're going to have to do is make sure that uh, we have the skills and the training for our workers uh, that uh, are unmatched around the world. Uh, there's been a lot of talk about education reform. Uh, we've actually implemented education reform. 
And we've been able to get more than 40 states to raise standards, to start looking at best practices, to figure out how we can train teachers more effectively, uh, make sure the teachers are, who aren't doing a good job uh, are getting the kind of training they need or they're not in the classroom, but also rewarding uh, those folks who are stepping up to the plate and making sure our kids are prepared. It also means matching up uh, companies with our community colleges to train people for the jobs that actually exist. And I know that companies like Siemens and UPS are doing a great job on this front. We want to continue uh, to push that forward. Uh, two last points. Uh, one is I will not give up on the need for us to rebuild America's infrastructure. Uh, when you think about your own businesses, uh, if you know that you've got uh, to make some capital investments and interest rates are historically low and it is a buyer's market, uh, you act, understanding that you've got to project five years out, 10 years out, 20 years out. Well, that's the situation our country faces. Uh, I, uh, I make no apologies for being uh, chauvinistic when it comes to wanting to have the best airports, the best roads, the fastest broadband lines, uh, the best uh, wireless connections here in the United States of America. And now's the time for us to do it. Uh, and we're going to need BRT's help. Uh, that will be good for business. It will allow you to move goods and services more quickly around the world. It will put people back to work. It will be a boost for our economy. Uh, and it will increase our productivity and efficiency over the long term. Uh, and the final thing I just want to make mention of is the issue of uh, how we pay for all these things. Um, you know, there, obviously, over the last couple of years, has been an enormous debate about uh, deficits and debt, and I'm sure we'll have uh, a chance to talk about that more uh, during the Q&A. The fact of the matter is that we have already made significant cuts when it comes to discretionary spending. We are pruning uh, this government to make sure the programs that don't work uh, we eliminate so that we can invest in the programs that are necessary for our growth. We're going to have to make uh, some uh, continued reforms when it comes to particularly uh, our health care system uh, because uh, it is still too expensive and we've got an aging population that uh, we're going to have to take care of. Uh, but we're also going to have to deal with revenue. Uh, and that's something that uh, I think the American people instinctually understand, that if we do this in a balanced way, uh, we can solve our problems. This is not uh, a situation that is analogous to Greece. Uh, we don't have to cut by 25 percent and raise taxes by 25 percent. That's not the situation we find ourselves in. Uh, these are relatively modest adjustments uh, that can stabilize our economy, give you the kind of business confidence you need to invest, uh, and make sure that America wins for the future. I'm prepared to be a partner in that process. Uh, but we're going to have to have everybody pulling together. The business community is going to have an important voice uh, in how that moves forward. So with that, uh, I want to thank you again, and I, uh, I look forward to the questions and the comments. Terrific. Right. Sure.